to adopt the agenda as amended. Okay. Is there a second on that? I see a second by Councillor Carpenter. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I see unanimous consent to that. Uh, next item on our agenda is the adoption of the minutes. And I believe we got these today. Or did, I, did we get them today? Uh, so maybe when I opened. No, last, week. Week. last week. Okay, very good. I'm slow. So I take a motion on the adoption of the minutes. So moved. Is there a second on that? Second. I see a second by Councillor Carpenter. Is there any discussion on the acceptance of the minutes? I see none. So all in favor of adopting the uh, minutes from the May 23rd meeting, please uh, say or indicate aye. 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 Any opposed? I see none. They have been adopted as drafted. We are on public forum and our practice is to allow public forum now. It is also to allow public forum during the agenda item. And there is one substantive item on the agenda, which is an update from the police commission and a discussion then of that, that update. And the way that we would do the, um, the public comment is we'd hear from the commission, in this case, co-chair um, Seguino, and then we'd open this up to counselors and then open it back to the public and then we'll sort of make that moving the, the process back and forth. Um, just ask us to be cognizant of time. And with that, I open the public forum to uh, anybody who would like to speak, knowing what I've just said. I see you, Amy. Can you, did you mute us? Yeah, okay, good. Okay, cool. So, um, so just a couple. And if you could thoughts. identify yourself, even though you have signed in. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm Amy Onowski, Work One. Uh, I've been involved with people with accountability, ballot item number seven, person people police. Uh, yeah, um, I know that this will be part, is part of the agenda for later, but, um, I just wanted to share my thoughts on it now as folks go into it later. Um, so um, I understand that mistakes happen and my mantra is always to be like really compassionate to people, but be ruthless with systems. Um, so I don't want anybody to take my comments uh, personally, like ask your neighbor, but I also want to say this on the record. Um, so if we use the first three meetings of this process as data points, I wouldn't call this process anywhere close to rigorous public input so far. Um, meetings have been in conflict with NPA meetings that were specifically focused on public safety, also police commission meetings. These haven't been posted on Supreme Court forum. And uh, as we all noted today, there was confusion over time and place of this meeting. I communicated to people on Monday, different times and places. Um, so yeah, when, when I asked where we stood on this process at the beginning of May during the city council public forum, I was told that it was really hard to schedule meetings and it was like harder than expected. Uh, so, and I know during the first meeting, um, Councillor Carpenter suggested that we really schedule months out, which I appreciated. Um, so I'm curious where we stand on this. Sounds like we're going to be scheduling those later. Uh, when are they? We put them on front porch forum too. Where do we stand on the public facing website? That will close this process. Um, and then my last thing is, um, I just wanna echo that I'm, you know, have been at these meetings for the past three meetings. And I think my concern is that we're going to take a while, this discovery phase, um, and not get to the phase of the work where we start articulating like draft structures and opinions. Um, and as Councillor Hightower has said, um, that's really where the work of community engagement is. Uh, September is going to come up really, really fast. So now that we're three meetings in, um, I'm really hoping that by the end of tonight's meeting, there could be like a pretty clear timeline when this committee is meeting. 
uh, and what the, you know, is there, can there be a timeline, a date you can put to, like when there will be draft language or when will we draft structure that the community will then be able to react to? So those are some aspirations and hopes. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Uh, yes, Dave. Yeah, my name's Dave Marr. I uh, just regular guy lives in Ward Four, cares about the city. Since the last meeting, I've reviewed the past proposals for improved police oversight. I saw some things I liked, some things that I didn't. I like the idea of having the police commission involved in whatever sort of process we come up with here, and they should probably be the core of it. I think. Think about it. Seems redundant to have a police commission, then another separate body that oversees the police. I mean, that's the police commission's charter. So it seems to me they should be the core. I think the police chief should be involved. The mayor should be involved. Again, that's their charter. The HR director of the city, and perhaps some additional citizens from the from the uh, the city, just to make it more broad based. Make sure it's inclusive. There are some things I didn't like, okay, uh, in some of the proposals. One of them would give priority to criminals and people with drug problems to be on whatever oversight committee we end up with. Seems to me we don't want people in the com committee, the oversight committee, who have an ax to grind. We want to have this, an oversight committee or group or board, whatever we call it, that works in harmony with the police, allows us to continue to rebuild the police force and further reduce criminal activity in the city. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and this is somebody online. Uh, Fareed has uh, their hand raised. Thank you. Fareed? Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. My name is Fareed. I live in Ward 5. Um, I want to uh, 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 I, I want to ask a question, which is what I've been trying to find out about this information, which is under the current disciplinary process, uh, historically, how many cases have there been where an officer's disciplined and then they appealed to the commission uh, uh, for that uh, disciplinary decision? I wanted to know how many cases have there been? Has it reached that step? Uh, and also, uh, how many cases have there actually end up being in arbitration, which is the final ultimate step in under the current disciplinary process? Uh, I can't get straight information about it. I don't think that's published anywhere. Uh, I don't know if any of the counselors know. So that's something that I would really like to know. Uh, and also, I want to speak in support of making uh, the charter change so that the uh, disciplinary process for the police department mirrors that of the fire department, in which uh, the fire commission is there, uh, and uh, but the city council ultimately has the decision uh, of whether to discipline and what kind of discipline uh, would a member of the department be. Uh, you want to look at the charter. I, I believe it's under uh, section 190 um, and and forward. Uh, so that's uh, it would be great if we could have that sort of democratic control of city council uh, be responsible for disciplinary decision. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And I hope that uh, we can get uh, some of that information if not in the commission um, report, then uh, shortly thereafter, uh, I see the chief is here. And so if there is something that uh, we uh, might need um, in terms of information that would uh, that we can't get, that we would get that shortly thereafter. Um, is there anybody else? I, I, not seeing the online, so you were very helpful, and uh, you don't see anybody who's. I don't. Okay. Well, then I will close the public forum and move us to an update from the police commission and uh, discussion of that, which will include city councilors and uh, the public. And we'll give it back and forth. Uh, and welcome, commission co chair. Stephanie Seguino, nice to have you here. I understand you've got a comprehensive report for yes. us. And Indeed. Why don't, you, why don't you start? Great. First of all, I want to thank members of the joint committee for inviting me here, uh, for the opportunity to share the commission's perspective 
Um, my task uh, was to discuss with you what is working with regard to civilian oversight thus far and what's not working um, under our current authority. And the um, we will be uh, advancing some specific recommendations, but this sort of lays the groundwork and gives you a bit more information about the work we've done and where some of the, the rough spots are, if you will. Um, and just to let you know that the comments I'm sharing with you reflect the input from current commissioners as well as recent past commissioners. So we, I broadly interviewed all of the commissioners to put this report together. I, I sent it to uh, Commissioner Travers just before this meeting, uh, Councillor Travers just before this meeting, and I assume he will share it with the rest of you. It is sort of detailed, my apologies, but that's what it's gonna be. <laughs> but you don't have to take notes because, uh, because you will have a written copy of this. So I wanted to start out with what is working well with the commission. Let me say that I am now the longest serving member of the commission, I've been on the commission almost three years. Uh, we recently lost a couple of commissioners that have been on for some time, and so their input into this was also very helpful. I think that most importantly, what is, work, what is working well is the distance we've come in the last three years for the commission to become an independent review body. And there are several aspects of that. One is the hiring of a staff person. Uh, the second is that meetings have been moved outside of BPD to City Hall. Both of these, uh, especially this, is important, I think, for citizens to understand that there's an arm's length relationship with the police department and there is some kind of independence. Uh, we were also fortunate enough to be funded for uh, independent legal counsel, important because the city attorney has a conflict of interest and in that they represent the police department, not necessarily uh, complainants from the city who were found complaints. Um, we recently were able to mount a SharePoint site for document sharing that has been huge in terms of our internal process. Uh, and as a result of that, we also have a much more organized complaint process and are able to track complaints more comprehensively than in the past. And finally, we have an excellent working relationship on the commission. I think we've begun, begun to develop an understanding of our role and work very cohesively together. Um, so, and I, I want to just emphasize that these are important changes. This is a slow process of building an institution, and it takes time to do that. And so we are continuing to put together, put in place processes and, and uh, policies for ourselves that manage our work better. Um, let me talk about what is not working well and with some thoughts that um, about where there might be some remedies. Although, as I said, we're going to supply the, the committee with uh, more detailed suggestions for remedies in the future. Uh, first of all is access to information. The commission continues to face impediments to unfettered access to materials that BPD uses in its investigations, which the commission also needs to, to perform its oversight role. I'm happy to elaborate on any of these afterwards, but I'm just going to sort of lay them out and you can come back to me if you want more details. Uh, second of all is a really important issue and it actually speaks to Fareed's question and that is due process for officers. Currently, uh, the structure is such that the commission both advises on discipline and is the body that hears grievances uh, with regard to discipline imposed by the chief. Uh, and so officer grievances on discipline in, in our view should be heard by a different body than the commission. Uh, and there are numerous alternatives, HR, the public safety committee, uh, the city council, for example, as uh, Farid was suggesting, my understanding from talking to former commissioners is that for years there have not been grievances brought to the commission. There was one last year, and that was the first one in years that it brought, brought to the commission. So our role in grievances is actually a rel relatively infrequent one. And for that reason, I think it's that task that should be outsourced, if you will, to a different entity. Um, third issue is the workload. The things have changed dramatically on the commission. We review now all use of force videos, complaints, work on policies, community outreach, and we're all working, uh, have full-time jobs. Uh, and so really this workload is unsustainable. I myself probably put in 20 to 30 hours a week working on the commission. Uh, and so what the commission has proposed in the past to the public safety committee and will uh, wants to reiterate 
is that it would be important to create the position of a monitor. I have attached a, a draft job description to the document that I sent you all to give you a sense of what the monitor would do. Uh, the expertise of a monitor would be uh, would also improve the commission's practices and procedures. And this is because many commissioners come on the commission with absolutely no experience with regard to police oversight. And having a monitor who has that deep experience can really provide us more guidance than we have now with the limited training that we've been able to get from NAPO. Um, fourth, and the, the, the longest of my comments here regards the complaint process. I think there are many things that need to be revised about this process. Just to remind you all, in August of 2020, I think that's the right year. <laughs> Chief Mirai, is that 2021 or 2020 that the complaint policy was adopted? It was the agreement between the department and the commission. It was 2020. 2020, okay. And uh, so I think it was a good start, but the practice of reviewing and providing oversight on complaints really has taught us a lot. And so I'll just share some thoughts. First of all, the timeline of closed complaints is far too long. It leads to a lot of uh, disappointment and frustration uh, from complainants and the process needs to be streamlined. That is something that the monitor uh, could help with for reasons I'd be happy to explain to you. A general comment from the commission uh, uh, that, that the commission, the commission should, should have more voice in the disposition in the of disposition complaints. Of complaints. Currently, the commission's, Currently role the commission's role in resolving of officers, regardless of the stipulation of union contracts. Uh, the next issue with regard to complaints is that the commission should be able to speak publicly about complaints, including discussion, uh, discussing patterns of complaints. So for example, we're seeing a lot of complaints now with regard to insufficient de-escalation and complaints about dispatch. So the, the point would be for the commission to have the ability to speak in general terms, at least about these complaints and the patterns that they're seeing in oversight. Um, next, the current process is set up in a way that leaves complainants feeling frustrated and unheard. 
A remedy for this is complaints to, complaints to come directly to the Commission uh, with the possibility of closeout meetings for high-level complaints such as abuse of authority, for example, that include a member of the police, commissions, uh, police commission. In complaints that are low-level, so minor complaints about uh, failure to respond to a call, for example, or maybe something even more minor than that, um, could be useful. Uh, but there are other mechanisms, actually, to deal with that. And so, for example, New Orleans has a mediation policy. And I think that, you know, what is central here is we want to help rebuild trust between the community and the police department. We want there to uh, be a, a feeling that there is accountability and that citizens feel heard about their complaints. And many of the complaints are, in fact, minor. But they, nevertheless, even the minor complaints erode trust in the police department if there isn't a sufficient response. And uh, uh, an email to a complainant that the the complaint is exonerated, meaning there will be no further action, isn't really satisfying to many complainants. I think they feel very unheard. So this is a possibility of something to explore. Uh, next on the list is that currently, the chief determines the level of the complaint, low, medium, or high level, rather than the commission. And on that basis, the chief makes the decision about which complaints to invest investigate. And it, it, in, in theory, High-level complaints are investigated and lower-level complaints are not investigated. But we have had issues with regard to designation uh, of complaints as low, mid, and high-level. We've had one serious complaint of a, uh, excessive use of force that the chief felt was a low-level complaint and declined to investigate. And a remedy for this is that the commission have the authority to determine whether a complaint is low, mid, or high-level and accordingly decide on whether or not to investigate. Um, and n n next, let me talk about just the whole issue, the general issue here of, of the focus on discipline. I realize that a lot of the public dissent has been around, uh, and debate has been around discipline, who has the final authority on discipline and so forth. But as I've mentioned, we actually have very few cases in which the commission would even be moved to issue uh, recommendations with regard to disciplining officers. A lot of it is about, as I said, training, supervision, uh, and so forth. And, uh, and so what happens is that the current complaint process really ignores the role that oversight can play in helping BPD become a learning organization. And I think that's really where the commission wants to see us go. And that is the, and so the commission's focus has been on providing its perspective on how BPD can do better and to move us in that direction. The department could be required to conduct a post-incident analysis on how things could have been done differently and submit this report to the commission after every incident review. Moreover, in some instances, and I think why, this is why this is important, is that in some instances, no policy is violated uh, or there may be incidents in which something is not even covered by policy. In those cases, uh, there still can be learning from looking at the incident and figuring out how, how it might have been done better. Uh, and. Uh, so the, the question really is, I think at the end of every incident, what is the learning here? How can the police department do better with regard to meeting the needs of the community? Uh, and this could be part of the closeout of complaints with complainants, is sharing what the police department learned from the incident. And in fact, there have been recent incidents in which the chief has met with complainants and done something of this sort, but we think it should be memorialized uh, as a practice. And again, to sort of centralize the role of of uh, the, the importance of, of the, the department being a learning organization. That's all I have to say about complaints right now, uh, the complaint, complaint process. Let me talk about the commission's role in policy making. The commission's uh, role in policy making, in my, view, in my view and that of the commission, should be memorialized in our authority. Currently, the commission is consulted when BPD revises policies. Any ordinance should make it clear, however, that the commission can itself initiate policy revisions and independently seek stakeholder input on policy revisions. With regard to data analysis, currently the commission does not have the resources to independently analyze data. It relies on the city data analysts to present an annual report on traffic stops, use of force, and arrests. This is prepared in consultation with the chief. As a result, this isn't an arm's length analysis. Uh, nor is it independent. Uh, a remedy is for the commission to have input into the types of analysis included in reports. 
including uh, analyzing use of force, stops, seizures, searches, and so forth, uh, and others, uh, other uh, issues in the data related to community and police interactions. Further, there are other areas of analysis that would be useful to inform the Commission's work, and a remedy for this is the Commission to have an independent uh, data to have, to have independent data analysis resources. With regard to the composition of the Commission, this too I know has been a, a subject of, of great um, discussion. The extent to which we want to weigh in on this at this point is that regardless of the method for appointing commissioners, the process should consider the needs of the Commission in terms of expertise and experience. Currently, commissioners are appointed without reference to the needs of the team, i.e. the Commission. And, um, as, and a remedy for this is that the Commission be consulted in advance of appointing new commissioners to identify the skills and experience needed to support the Commission's work. Next on the list is use of force incidents. The Commission currently reviews use of force incidents, and that's all. We are mistakenly portrayed, therefore, as having approved uses of force because we have reviewed a synopsis of the incident and videos. The Commission should be able not only to review all incidents of use of force for policy violations, but should also be able to initiate investigations and make recommendations regarding training and or discipline as warranted. Uh, with regard to the Commission's role in reviewing training, officer training, the, cur the Commission currently does not have the resources to initiate reviews of training, nor, does DP nor has BPD given access to the information required to conduct such reviews. A remedy for the com uh, is for the Commission to have inf the information required to co conduct such reviews and have the resources to hire outside consultants to review the quality of BPD trainings. There may be other ways to review them other than outside consultant, but nevertheless, there should be a role for the Commission in being able to do and assess the quality of, uh, of trainings. With regard to investigations, currently the Commission has no authority to conduct its own investigations. Uh, the Commission receives heavily redacted investigative reports and may comment on their in in inadequacies and lacuna, but the Chief is not required to address those recommendations. There are three remedies here. First, the Commission should have the authority to review investigations for thoroughness, consistency, and accuracy as recommended by CNA rather than the chief serving as the final authority on the facts of an investigation. Second, the commission should have the authority to conduct investigations if BPD declines to do so, with resources in its budget to conduct external investigations. And third, the commission should have direct control and authority over an automatic external investigation whenever an officer uses a weapon, discharges a firearm, or discharges a taser. Um, with regard to hiring and promotions, currently the Commission has no role in hiring and promotions. The Commission, however, uh, it would be beneficial for the Commission to sit on hiring and promotion committees, and in so doing, the Commission could help to improve interview questions. Audits. Uh, in addition to reviewing complaints and uses of force, the Commission should have the authority to conduct audits. And that is really looking for systemic patterns in the data. Of very, on various topics, as I said, such as de-escalation, but many other types of audits would be useful. Uh, once the Commission completes its audits, it should have the authority to make formal recommendation of policy reforms to the Mayor, the Police Chief, and the City Council with the findings of audits made public. The Commission relationship with the City Council. The Commission is appointed by the City Council and currently interacts via the Public Safety Committee. That said, there should be broader lines of communication including for the Commission to have the discretion to report complaints and Commission findings directly to the City Council. Secure funding. For the Commission to be free from political manipulation that could weaken it, its funding should be both secure and sufficiently robust. Uh, it's possible, and I'm not suggesting this is the case now, but it's possible for a hostile administration to deprive the Commission of its ability to perform its duties by cutting its funding. One way to insulate the Commission from cuts to funding from uh, unpopular, politically unpopular decisions is for its budget to be tied to a fixed percentage of poli the police department's non-capital budget. So in other words, as the number of officers increases, the amount of oversight increases, and the budget would increase to accommodate the oversight role of the Commission. Uh, finally, not finally, next to the last one, 
uh, the Commission role in oversight of non-sworn officers and professional personnel. The Commission's role right now in providing, uh, oh, I should say not right now, but the Commission's role in providing oversight of non-sworn officers and professional personnel, so CSOs, CSLs, and members of the CARES team should be made explicit. I think we are, we are reviewing complaints about CSOs, but uh, with the uh, rolling out of this alternative uh, um, uh, public safety system, the interface between the commission and CSLs and the CARES unit should really be made more explicit. Uh, finally, this is finally, <laughs> community engagement. This aspect of the commission's work has not been fully developed, in part due to time constraints. Nevertheless, it's an important part of building trust between the community and BPD, and we may have some more specific suggestions with regard to that when we come back to you. Uh, our goal is to um, vet a variety of recommendations amongst commissioners, to bring a motion to the police commission at its June 27th meeting. Assuming that passes, we would then share those recommendations with the joint committee. So let me just close by saying that you know, an overarching issue in the public debate has been the question of who has final authority over discipline and the resolution of complaints more generally. Uh, as noted by the mayor in his 2021 memo, the, there, needs to be checks and, there need to be checks and balances. And at the end of June, the commission will provide the joint committee with recommendations on how to achieve this. Uh, as we work to define the authority uh, in police oversight, it should be understood that a weak civilian review board is worse than no civilian review board because it gives the illusion of independent accountability but actually provides little to no accountability. Further, it can lead to an increase in community resentment as residents turn to the commission to seek redress yet find very little. Uh, ultimately, what the community wants and is articulated in the Talitha, via the Talitha report and many public conversations is meaningful oversight coupled with a willingness on the part of BPD to acknowledge when it, mistakes have been made and a commitment to do better. The Commission can play an important role in identifying where policing actions could be improved and be an important interface with the community. But for this role to be impactful, Burlington requires uh, a police department that accepts civilian oversight and is also a willing partner in this work. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Actually, Stephanie, before, is there a way that you can run down or summarize the uh, job description of the monitor? Yeah, sure. Please, thank you. Absolutely. Just so you know, large cities have monitors uh, that are full-time because commissioners may not be uh, full-time. And, and I'm sorry, where is the written report? I forwarded it. I received it from Commissioner Seguino before the meeting, and okay. it should be in your email now. I also, just so folks know, sent it to Joe and to Kim to uh, publish online for the public. Okay. Thanks. And for the public and for the people here, we are printing out all of the documents that we're posting. There are two notebooks here. So as we continue to post things, uh, we will print them out and add them to the, uh, uh, to the paper record so that people can, can read them. And thank you. Okay. The, uh, so there are several things we've identified in this in this particular job description. Monitors in some cities have much broader authority. Uh, so one role for the monitor would be to receive, review, catalog, and track citizen and internally generated complaints. That is a huge time, uh, time sink for uh, commissioners, and it takes away from our ability to do many other things, including research on policies that would be useful. Uh, the monitor, the, the, the reviewer, sometimes called an independent reviewer or monitor, would monitor the complaint investigations to ensure the review is complete, uh, thorough, and complies with any existing poli police procedures uh, and so forth. So they would be a uh, direct interface with the police department in the uh, conduct of invest investigations, monitoring them, providing input on where they think additional uh, testimony is required and, and so forth. Uh, the reviewer would uh, identify any inefficient and un unlawful police operations via whether it's the use of force videos that we see or uh, through the complaint process and review of incidents. And the reviewer would report on complaints to the commission um, and participate in executive sessions. That experience is really helpful to the commission because, again, the work that we do just require, has, even with three years on this, I continue to find myself learning a great deal. 
and with new commissioners, it's really important to have someone there that has a longer term memory and the expertise to, to help integrate new commissioners. And the reviewer or the monitor can provide guidance on best practices for investigation of complaints and analyze and verify uh, reporting trends, for example. So this is just, I'm just briefly summarizing this, a little bit more detail. So th those are the kinds of um, tasks that the monitor would uh, take on. Thank you. Um, I would open the floor for uh, joint committee member questions, comments, uh, then go to uh, Councillor Grant if she would like as city councillors and then go to the public. So I see Councillor Shannon. Welcome home, by the way. Thank you. Um, thank you for, for all of that work. And I think that the, what I like about the idea of a monitor is that it brings professionalism to the process that I think is, <clears throat> you know, the challenge we have with the idea of citizen oversight is as the commissioner is currently experiencing, um, the volume of work and the expertise required to do that is beyond, beyond what your, your, average your average citizen can, can provide, provide and beyond a reasonable ask because, because it is a job. job. But, but on the, on the other, other hand, hand I, I I have, I have thought a lot about what, you know, you know what, are what are we trying to oversee? And if we're talking about 26 sworn officers on patrol, which I would think is the primary um, target of, of discipline, that's where, you know, those are the folks that are having the most interaction, probably in the most challenging environments with the public. What you're asking for seems to be a tremendous amount of resources for this task. And wouldn't it be better to have a system like that that is um, and also more objective, to have a system like that outside of the city, to have something like that at a state or regional level? Um, where you have somebody who is monitoring, maybe not one police department, but many police departments. Um, how can we, do, do you see a difference? Do you see the resources you're, re I mean, it really sounds like a lot of resources to me. And as you say, in most of these places, we're not even talking about this talk about you know how do we do things better um what do you think of the idea of uh doing something like this more regionally than locally what is the advantage of doing it just at the local level and there was one other thing you had said about um the state police began disclosing complaints and disposition Regardless of union contracts, CNA, CNA said that, said that other cities, cities do that. Do that. Do that. Vermont, Vermont State Police, police that, was that was a separate, separate there were two separate statements. statements. Okay. Vermont, Vermont State, State Police is making complaints, complaints and, and the disposition public. public. Yeah. Yeah. CNA, CNA recommended, recommended that as well and said, and said that, that there are numerous cities, cities that do that regardless of the stipulations, stipulations of the union contract. Don't you have to honor the union contract? I'm just, no, I'm just telling you what the CNA, CNA said. I'm not, uh, I, I'm not in a position to, to, you know, you know uh, uh, to, 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 to explore, explore the, the legal, legal ramifications of that, of that. But, but I'm just sharing with you what CNA said. And its recommendations. Okay. With regard to, yeah, okay. Um, so Burlington receives something like uh, 50, 55 complaints a year. Um, that's actually similar to Boulder, Colorado, which also has its own monitor. So you said Boulder? That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a they have a full time monitor. Uh, we're not just monitoring the twenty six officers available for duty, but also their supervisors, the leadership of the the organization, uh, the policies, the uh, the CSOs, and so there are numerous things to monitor. If you look at, uh, NACOL has a, an interesting website in which they provide information about all of the, uh, the civilian oversight boards across the country. And if you, I 
happen to look at Tucson, for example. You can look at the funding for all of these. And on a, if we if we put Tucson and um, and Burlington on a per capita basis, uh, Tucson is spending far more than we are currently. So I I totally as, a, as someone who cares about you know uh, money and expenditures and keeping them appropriately low, I also uh, um, appreciate that um, that it it does require funding more funding to do this than is currently available. Uh, I think that you know the the risk the city faces in terms of lawsuits, for example, in, in not uh, in in police operations not being conducted well, is is very costly, and a monitor is relatively cheap compared to the cost of lawsuits, for example. But uh, so I would just say that I I my can't really react to the notion of regional uh, or countywide monitor. That's you know perhaps an idea that you'd like to explore. But I can say that civilian oversight bodies of our size and with our number of complaints have monitors. And it could be, you know, it could be that this person is part-time, right? It, it, it may very well that be that you can combine it with some other activities. I'm not suggesting that the person necessarily needs to be full-time. Uh, I think actually when we or originally drafted this, we thought that this might be three days a week. Who would be the overseer? Um, a good question. Uh, I think that one would look into that in other cities, see how uh, who their monitors report to. Are you all done? Yeah. Great. Sarah? Um, just a couple of, what, what type of background would you expect the monitor to come with? Sure. Uh, you know, so for example, there's a, there, a person who is familiar with police investigations, people that have, for example, worked for the Human Rights Commission doing investigations, okay. that kind of person. Okay. It's really it wouldn't necessarily need to be a lawyer, right? Uh, uh, it, I mean, it certainly could well be, but the lawyers are expensive, and so, you know, you might be able to uh, hire persons that have... I was sort of asking that in the vein of, you know, it's not full time. Are there types of people out there that you could contract with? I think school departments do that for child abuse, and mm -hmm. I was just trying to think about like, um, the other question I want to ask is, and maybe it's too much for tonight, there was quite a bit of work done last year with the Public Safety Committee and a draft from the city attorney on some ordinance changes. And I don't know if that's what you're going to get to at the end of the month, but I'm just pretty curious where you're at with, with that or your reaction to that. Um, you know, is that a starting place for us or are we more likely to get a starting place for what you're going to present to us at the end of the month? I think the starting place is the city council resolution of October 2021. Okay. And we're then going to move forward from that. Okay. Are you finished? Yes. Tim, do you have any questions? No. You don't. Ben, do you have any sure. questions? Um, and I see that Councillor Hightower has joined us, so... I don't know if you've been at how long and what you heard, but we're now in the counselor comment. If you're going to need more time to orient uh, Soraya, by all means, not a problem. That is, I will trust to get back and watch this meeting. I was one of the people who got confused. I was like, I had a meeting on my calendar and I can't find it. Somebody just canceled with the special session. So apologize. I meant to join you all in person. I love that. You are, you are not alone in that confusion uh, that uh, we have blamed on various sources, but uh, we, will, uh, uh, we will do our best to, to eliminate that uh, going forward. So welcome and thank you, Councillor Tra Travers. Uh, thank you, and Stephanie, thanks very much for being here. I'm sorry that our last meeting conflicted with your meeting. We'll make sure to not do that again, but obviously appreciate your being here. And we had uh, Commissioner Rao and... Um, Commissioner uh, Oski here at our first meeting, and so it was great to have them. Um, this was incredibly helpful, and I think uh, while Councillor Hightower um, had joined us just a moment ago, she's been an important voice in our last two meetings in sort of narrowing the scope of this committee's review to the end of our putting pen to paper eventually on some changes here, and I think that your report here, and I'm looking forward to the 
Commission's additional suggestions, uh, which I, I think we'll talk about our next meetings momentarily. I think will we'll probably come at our next meeting based on the timeline that you just gave us, um, will be really helpful to the end of our narrowing the scope of the uh, committee's review. Um, I think just a couple questions from my own end. So one of the things that I like to do is to go back into the charter itself and our ordinances and see sort of from there, what is the directive of the police commission? And I suspect, as you know, having been on there for eight years or so, our, our charter is, is pretty vague with respect to what the police commission's authority is, um, only vesting it really with the authority to hear disciplinary appeals and then um, the authority to do basically whatever powers and responsibilities the city council provides it over the years. Um, now, I'm assuming that those sort of powers and responsibilities can be given by resolution, maybe an ordinance, but maybe I'm missing something. I don't really see anything on our ordinance that outlines the police commission's powers and responsibilities. So for the most part, it's what you all have developed over time over the last eight years. I know that the mayor's administration, the current administration has outlined sort of by executive order some additional scope mm -hmm. and responsibility, but can you just sort of speak to sort of looking at our existing charter, looking at our ordinances, um, sort of when you came into the police commission, sort of what you understood, the complete police commission's sort of clear authority to be um, at the moment. And I, I know that's a really loaded question, but <laughs> perhaps, perhaps yeah. sort of what the sort of clear like black letter authority has been as compared to the space that the commission has sort of due to your and your colleagues' great initiative carved out for itself? That's a great question. The complaint policy of 2020 really defined our role in terms of uh, responding to complaints. And that role is advisory. If you look at civilian oversight models, there are three different types of oversight models. Uh, ours would be considered a review or advisory model, and that complaint process is consistent with that. Um, there's also um, uh, steps taken, and I think this was prior to when I joined the commission, that the use of force um, incidents would be reported publicly to the commission, and we would review those, but there, would be, there was no guidance on what that review would entail. Um, with regard to policy, the practice uh, had been that the police department would initiate policy revisions uh, of its own directives. The commission would approve those or provide input into those. The, there, there were, the CNA recommendation was that the commission also be able to initiate policy reviews and seek stakeholder input. Prior to that time, I think the perception was that if the commission approved a policy revision, that was in itself stakeholder input. But that's, you know, for serious, for certain areas like mental health, for example, where the commission doesn't necessarily have the expertise, you really do need stakeholder input to help shape those policies. Um, the, I think the commission has, there's no place that this is explicitly laid out, but that the commission uh, has the ability to comment on what they see as patterns uh, in terms of complaints or practices and so forth, but that's not been memorialized. So it seems to me that there's some part of our work that we've been doing that is memorialized in, uh, in various policies that were passed in 2020 and the, uh, the city charter, but others that have been sort of implicit and that we have uh, taken on. But for the commission to function well, those really need to be memorialized and made more explicit. Great. Um, I have three other questions, a couple of which should be relatively quick. You, no, you, no you, you do not need to rush. This is about okay. substantive right, review, good. so just to be clear. <laughs> so this may come after the commission next meet and comes up with recommendations, but assuming the commission were to have some scope of authority as you've outlined it here, what are your thoughts on the current size of the commission and um, whether it, it's right sized or mm. it should be increased in size? When I looked at New Haven, for example, I think there are, I think there are a civilian board of, of 15 mm -hmm. um, as compared to the size of the commission right now. So what, what are your thoughts there? I think that seven is fine. I think that bigger than that is becomes unwieldy for 
a lot of different reasons for coordination reasons in particular. Uh, the only reason to expand it would be if you didn't have a monitor because we really, even with seven commissioners, we don't have enough uh, of people's time to do the work that needs to get done. But uh, I think that seven is, a, is actually a very manageable number. It provides for enough variety of, of, of points of view and really rich discussions. And I'm not sure that expanding it beyond that would be helpful. And I think five would be too small. Okay. Um, that's my opinion. I just should say yeah, about no, the commission. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, I will actually ask if they would comment on that as well. Great. Um, the resolution that the council passed in October of 2021 that you've referenced um, talked about potentially the possibility of setting up a, a second board, but for the most part, as I read it, focused on the police commission itself serving both in an investigative role as well as maintaining its position as an appellate body, which is why um, when I read the first draft of what the city attorney's office had put together, it put forward this concept of the police commission splitting itself up where uh, you know, th three or four uh, folks would be on the investigatory side of a complaint and the remainder of the commission would be left out of that process such that in the event there was a later appeal of that discipline um, that they would not be conflicted out of sitting in that role. Am I correct in assuming I know that you sort of cite back to that resolution as the foundation for what you all are thinking about right now, but it, it sounds like the commission may be of the mindset now that that doesn't make the most sense, that um, there should be, that, that, that we can't sort of split the commission up in that way, four, three, three, four, uh, and, and do both of those roles. Is that right? Uh, so I'm right now I'm representing my opinion yep. uh, and some discussions, but not necessarily the commission commission stance on this. Um, you know, going back to the issue that there's rarely a grievance. It means that if you were to set aside some commissioners to be available to hear a grievance, you're essentially removing them from important work of the commission increasing the workload of the remaining commissioners, but of greater concern to me is the politicization of the commission, jockeying for position about who hears investigations uh, and who and who who advises on, on disposition of complaints. So I, I think that's a fraught process. I think the assumption should be that anybody that's appointed commissioner has that role and that the grievance role, because it is so rare, could be outsourced to a different entity. So to confirm, sort of, I don't expect you to be able to speak on behalf of the whole commission here, but given your experience, I think your individual input here would be helpful. Um, let's assume that the police commission, as it is right now, is the commission that continues to have uh, policy input, continues to review use of force incidents, continues to do uh, you know, potentially community outreach, and so on and so forth. Do you then also view the commission as uh, the investigatory body of those complaints and then a separate entity being set up to hear the, the rare grievance today um, or um, would you expect that the investigations would be done by the independent monitor or some separate body such that the commission as it exists under the charter right now would hold on to that uh, appellate role what are your thoughts there most of the investigations are conducted now by bpd and it's, we have we've initiated a couple of investigations ourselves for a variety of reasons. But uh, it seems to me that, that if you have a monitor that monitors investigation, BPD's investigations, then uh, the commission doesn't, wouldn't be conducting many of its own investigations. Again, that would be a relatively infrequent occurrence. Uh, having the monitor actually, I think, is hugely important and useful in terms of confidence in the quality of the investigations, the objectivity of the investigations, and so forth. Uh, so I think that would be really beneficial. And again, it would then take away the uh, burden on the commission to have to itself conduct a lot of investigations. But there may be circumstances in which it, it should have the authority to, under certain circumstances, to conduct them. But again, that would be infrequent. Okay. Um, the last question that I had on my list here was that I know that in reviewing um, 
the draft ordinance that the city attorney's office put together previously and, and previous police commission's response to that, there was some discussion around um, how the complaint process as it stands right now as of 2020 really only focuses on external complaints from the community. Um, and I'm wondering if you could speak a little bit more to you know, the extent there ever is or was an internal complaint from someone within the police department, what your thoughts are with respect to what the police commission's role would be with respect to an internal complaint, how it may differ from an external complaint, or do you think the independent monitor in your mind is the entity that would be responsible in, in one form or another for overseeing, again, perhaps the police department's uh, own investigation of, of an internal complaint? Right. Uh, I want to, I'd like to just say that I think that that's something we haven't dealt with extensively and haven't thought about extensively. I'd really want to think more deeply about that. Um, I, the, the commission's sense is that it wants to be able to hear internal complaints. Uh, I think there's a sense that, you know, amongst the commissioners and civilian oversight bodies in general, that they're there not just for the community, but they're also there for officers. Uh, and, but I don't, we haven't really thought deeply about, about that process. So at least to my knowledge, in the time I've been on the commission, we haven't received an internal complaint from officers. So I don't, we don't have any, ex I don't have any experience yet in how that would be handled or how we might want to modify how that is currently handled. I will put that down as something that we should look into a bit more though. I just remember looking back to the commission's comments sort of in that red line version of mm -hmm. previous ordinance. I think there may have been some discussion around adding internal complaints to the process that right. the commission would have there. So right. that would, I would be curious to hear more about that. I don't know if we have Chief Mira here. Just a point of information, the current agreement does include all complaints, and AD 40 includes all complaints. That includes complaints made by officers. It includes complaints identified by police staff and brought to the police commission. And just last week in executive session, we brought in just such a complaint, Commissioner. So the notion that there haven't been complaints brought from officers or uh, that have risen from internal is not is That's actually a good point. And that was an example of a case where we declined to comment because we feared that we might be, the, the discipline might be grieved and we waived um, any input into the discipline itself. Thanks for that correction. There have been a number of such. Okay. So we won't get into a back and forth, but thank you for the, uh, the point of, uh, of clarification. Um, and uh, Joe's not here, so I don't know whether that um, that policy is part of our um, our documents. But and you, uh, DD forty is the uh, d d memorializes the, that. Um, yes. Okay, so and we can we as does the agreement from August twenty twenty. Uh, an agreement with the commission, so we should make sure that uh, if if it is possible for you, because I don't have it independently, I don't think. To chief to, to send it to uh I believe I provided all those okay I'm I do so again. they're also publicly available sure it'd be it'd be much better for us not to be able to, to have to hunt for them um but um if I, I I'm I'm sorry if I've missed it uh, previously but dd40 is the uh, is also there and that's an easy one for us to get. DD uh, forty is a very problematic directive that is one of the first orders of business on the CNA report to commission. But right now it is a current yes. governing document. Yes. That's that's what we're we're looking to. Is the uh, C all CNA in there too? Yeah. We yeah. so just to confirm what we have is sort of in our package of documents. Okay. We have and and Chief had provided uh, some of these before the uh, 2022 citizen complaint process flowchart, use of force flowchart. We do have the CNA assessment of PPD final report. Um, and we, we could add to the grouping um, DD40 as well, uh, which is not a, a part of our agenda. Right. Yeah. I don't know that we have um, the complaint process that we've been discussing here uh, from August of, of 2020. And if I miss that myself, no, uh, I can email it to you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so we will we'll, we will need to just get better in terms of the documents that we are posting as part of meetings, so that they become part of the public record. Because 
everybody should have equal access for them. And um, we have a um, uh, the staff person in Joe Dempsey um, from the city attorney's office who does that work. So we just need a little bit of coordination. Um, uh, uh, I, you, you have some, you have I comments just, or questions? Just a quick question or a comment. An index would be wonderful. I mean, we have 472 pages in today's meeting. Um, if, if an index can be done in several ways. So if you're, if you could be so kind as to just maybe flesh out a little bit in a, in, in an email, that would be great so that we can make this stuff user friendly and you friendly for those who are not attorneys having to deal with all sorts of documents, generally speaking, or researchers. So that would be, that would be helpful in terms of, uh, uh some thought on that. And it's a great idea. Um, any other reflections or, or comments that you want to make Councillor Dempsey at this point I did just I get the index. You okay that's great um before we get to um the public comment on this uh, sort of first round um Councillor Hightower or and I'm gonna have to get some help here with that uh or Councillor Grant would you like uh the opportunity to ask some questions. And I would start with Councillor Hightower as a member of the committee first, if you would like. I understand that that's useful for some Okay, I, yep, I, you said that. Not, not, it is not a problem. Don't, no need to apologize. Uh, Councillor Grant, is there something that uh, you would like to ask or state before we turn to the public comment? Um, running out of light in this room. I wanted to say a couple of things. Um, now that I'm no longer on the commission, of course, I'm um, not privy to the last executive session regarding um, the commission, if I'm understanding uh, Commissioner Spino correctly, recusing themselves uh, regarding a complaint from them as an officer. Um, the statement that the commission saw, I think the word that was just used was several of these complaints. That's, that's not true in my experience of almost three years on the, on the commission. That was just not something that was, that was seen. And I do disagree with that. Um, I do strongly agree with the concern over the political of making everything the commission did political. I, uh, this has made me very um, upset at times because it shouldn't be a political issue. This should be about what's right and what's wrong for this, the residents of Burlington. Um, the issue of expertise, you know, when I first joined the committee to review uh, policing policy, Maybe people would have looked at me and thought I wasn't a person with quote unquote expertise. I was someone who cared about the community, I was someone who cared about the community safety. Um, I was someone who had personal experiences, and I was also someone willing to learn. So I think we have to be very careful about uh, in the future how we label what is considered to be expertise and how we decide we want to memorialize um, requirements because a big part of this is being willing to work hard and being willing to step up and speak from a lot of experience. I would consider myself to be a subject matter expert now in oversight and accountability um, and you know, as we go through this process, hope to continue to give more um, information. Really want to strongly agree with uh, Commissioner Sabino when we're talking about not focusing on just the officers. We keep doing that. We have to focus on our community safety, uh, for all the individuals involved in community safety response um, to the system. And because we're, we're, we're changing what that means, and I believe we are doing that for the better. Um, time is, is huge. Time is huge. And as a, um, a commissioner who remained mostly unpaid, I work 
the majority of my tenure. It is really something that um, it's a big concern. So I think it should be put down as a no because it's a big concern, which also leads back to the need for support, such as a monitor and having someone um, to administrate it. Uh, objective: the the police commission's objective. You know, a, a lot of the political aspects of the teeth that have brought up around the commission, a lot of misinformation that's been given to the public. All of that was meant to make things seem not objective. Uh, the commission is objective, but the problem is, as members of the commission, we weren't allowed to tell people. You know, there was misinformation that was being distributed, but we had to be very careful about what we were saying because we couldn't um, reveal things that had been said or talked about in executive session. So that's probably one of the biggest frustrations that I had as a commissioner, knowing that um, this information, and, and, and it's a couple of, not even a couple, a lot of times just out and out lies meant to do fear mongering around the concept of oversight and accountability and saying sometimes that it might frighten officers from wanting to work with the city of Burlington is very disturbing to me. And I think we have to be very, very mindful of that. Um, we don't want to pile on to that misinformation um, during this process. And uh, I think that Uh, I think that was it with regards to my notes. Um, but to also, uh, to Commissioner Sabino's point, that other oversight bodies across the country are doing these things that we talk about. These things are not, quote unquote, experiments. That was something that was thrown about. Um, although there is no oversight body that is exactly the same because each community um, says, what is it that we need to hear? But the concept and the practices, those are what we are going to be talking about. And um, things that are being done in other areas could be done here, especially if we claim that we really care about transparency, because we hear that a lot, transparency, transparency, 21st century policing, 21st century policing, but then we're not actually doing the things that uh, live up to those pillars and live up to transparency. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Councillor Grant. Uh, for myself, I am looking forward to the particulars that you'll come back um, with uh, from the next uh, commission meeting. Um, I have real concerns about the, the amount of work the mixture, the in what I consider to be inherent conflicts of interest when you've got a, a single body that is doing auditing and reviewing and monitoring and investigations and discipline. I think it's exceedingly difficult and can create conflicts when the same people are being close to the, to the department in terms of helping um, even with a monitoring system and also being engaged in the discipline problem uh, process. So I'm, um, I'm concerned about that, but I'm personally open to a model that has broad community consensus. So, you know, I, I'm, I, I, that's just the way where it is with that. Um, and I, I do think that will be interested, I will be interested in seeing what the recommendations are in terms of, as Councillor Travers was saying, um, both a charter and ordinance recommendations. I think that there's some basic categories and you hit on all of them and he asked uh, my specific questions that were sort of festering. So, um, so nicely done. Um, but um, I mean, so there are going to be these choices that we've got based on all these categories. And um, we'll see if we can hit a sweet spot of community um, 
uh, the consensus. Um, and so uh, I would hope that the commission will look at it in those different baskets and, and try as hard as you can to, to group all of the investigative slash disciplinary from the complaint and the, through the grievance, through appeals, all of that into the investigations of it, into one set of recommendations, and then your auditing and monitoring about the way that things are working to keep constant improvement and you're getting the flow of information as being a separate category. Um, and if you decide that, whoa, we really do have too much and the, 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 you know, to then make recommendations, and you have in terms of the monitor, so just be mindful of that. I, would, I think that that will be greatly helpful to us. And those are my comments right now. And so therefore, Sarah, and then I want to turn it over. Maybe there's nobody left. I would give counselors another round. Um, is this something that you... you... Well, I just want to um, support what you said, because I think it will be important to um, quickly, or not quickly, but differentiate charter versus ordinance and i there's a ton of work to be done in ordinance and i personally don't think as much in charter and, and i find the charter somewhat inflexible so i just just kind of keeping those two hats on will be really important for your recommendations both in order to get input to go to voters so i just think that the other thing which I don't see it's a major thing, but I really would be curious to understand the state police process, you know, and maybe we could invite somebody for a short um, explanation to us about that. So we can definitely free the commission from that responsibility to, yeah. to get our own. Uh, that yeah. it, is, it is noted on that. And so with that, let us turn to members of the public here and then... Um, Fareed, I think, is the one member of the public that is um, online. So, and it is perfectly fine if no if no member of the public would like to comment now about this presentation. But if you have comments, Dave. Yes, I have a question. If I might ask a question. Of course. Uh, do we have distinct definitions as to what a low, medium, and high level complaint? Those are defined in the union contract. I don't have the contract in front of me, but, but they but are there defined are, But in there the are contract. succinct definitions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I think that now that Joe is here, we can say that we should probably have the current um, union contract be part of the documents so that everybody can see. Because uh, when, when, one, when one person says succinct, another one might see as being vague and ambiguous. So... Uh, depending on how you how you look at it and what you're looking for, so let us try to get that document um, on. Is there any other points or comments, Dave, that you would like to uh, to so make? One quick question, if I could. What is CNA? I've seen that around. I don't find the definition of CNA. I think it must be CNA. Somebody want to field that one, Chief? CNA was a consulting firm that was hired by the city to perform a full operational and functional assessment of the Burlington Police Department. It doesn't stand for anything. It may have at one point, but the, the, it's no longer an acronym. It is simply the name. I think once upon a time, N was Navy because they did some federal work uh, and, and did some consultancies of that kind. But currently, it's just CNA. And so they began, they were, uh, it was required that that assessment begin with the June uh, 2020 racial justice resolution, but the company wasn't identified and hired until uh, very early 2021. Um, and then it began its work uh, and completed it in September of 2021. Okay, great, thank great. you. Great, excellent. Any other? That's it for me. Great. Amy. No, you go first. <laughs> and if you could be so kind since you are muffled by the mask. Oh, too, I was. You don't have to take it off. I mean, if you're not comfortable, just know that uh, talking louder and clearer would sure, be really sure. helpful. Thank you. Cool. Um, uh, gather my thoughts. Oh. So um, I wanted to um, second the thought that Councillor Bergman brought up, which is, um, you know, working on the uh, ballot item number seven um, and being involved in that, uh, 
taught me a lot about what the police commission's role is. Um, and there's so much in there, as you have brought up, like so many things. And so I do really wonder about the mix of, um, of all of that, if it creates um, opportunities for bias, if we're thinking about, you know, as um, Councilor Grant often says, um, a lot of the police commission's role is really about training and coaching and, and not so often as much about discipline. And so thinking about the concept of the same person who's growing familiar with you and coaching you also then becomes a person who's like reviewing and investigating discipline you or the same board or same body. And so I, I think that is a point that deserves a lot of community engagement. I'm not somebody who should be giving um, a strong perspective on that because for me, policing is just a concept. I'm a white cis woman. <laughs> so, but that is a point that I think really needs to be like thoughtful and considered. And I don't think it was a big part of the conversation that the community had around the ballot item because I think there was a lot of misunderstanding of just like how much the police commission does outside of that, that you could chunk off a piece that just is about oversight and there still would be a whole bunch that could be done. Um, so I think I just want to uh, echo that. I just really think that needs a lot of community engagement. Um, and then the one other thing I, I wanted to echo was um, Councilor Grant bringing up the piece around um, like how we're defining expertise. Um, I, I think it's just really, uh, you know, there's five pillars that were, were grounding um, the community control police proposal and a big part of that was representation. And so making sure that we're not creating a situation where if the city council or sorry, if the um, being too rigid about what kind of skills or expertise are on that need to be um, on that body um, because we want to make sure that we're having like truly community representation specifically on that oversight process. Um, so those are just my two comments as like police commission is going into this process and I look forward to hearing specific things and thank you so much for preparing this. Thank you. Great. Lee, did you have? Yeah, I was just reviewing my notes. Thank you so much. This presentation was really enlightening. I, I like to think I'm pretty familiar with the commission, but I learned a bunch of new stuff tonight, so that's great. Um, some stuff you mentioned um, that I think would be really good for uh, community trust building is the monitor position you talked about. Um, that specifically addresses concerns I've heard, you know, people on, on both sides of the, the ballot number seven item had, um, particularly in my neck of the woods, the new North End, I've heard a lot of concerns about um, uh, qualifications and experience of commissioners around investigating incidences and people feeling concerns that maybe that experience is not there. Um, and I'm not saying whether I agree with that or not, but I do really like the idea of a monitor who has had experience um, in investigating uh, different types of complaints. I think that's great. And also, like other people have mentioned, it's clear that the workload of the commission is very heavy. Um, and speaking as someone who is on a different commission and several <laughs> committees, you know, your your free time really limits your civic engagement. And I, I, you know, I had a hard time recruiting people for commissions that you maybe spend three hours a week. Um, and so the, the more hours a week a commission takes up, the less um, amount of people can apply. So anything that can help with that is great. Um, and then I, I really liked, um, you know, the, the comment about being able to share complaint and complaint outcome data that's been anonymized. Obviously, it's important that officers still have the rights to um, uh, anonymize certain anonymized things. All their business can't be put out there. That's just not fair. Um, it wouldn't be for any employee. Um, but I think that's important because currently, like, the only only things we hear about are complaints that are, are just, like, so incendiary that they've reached, like, the social classification of scandal. And I think it's honestly really helpful to also hear about mundane stuff, little stuff that got addressed through training or whatever. Um, that's really, really helpful for public trust because, obviously, that's, I, I'm assuming, and I think what I've gleaned from people is the mundane stuff is the majority. The, the, big, the big stuff is not the majority, but you, you don't really know that unless you're being given that information. And I, I think that's important because 
you know, my personal view from jobs I've had, some with, with very serious consequences for mistakes, are most mistakes you can come back from, except for very, very serious mistakes. Most mistakes you can come back from and can be great learning experiences. And I think I think most people understand that, you know, and kind of to a point a Amy was talking about, I mean, unfortunately, I mean, I have had a lot of police involvement um, in my life, both due to the time before I got sober and also as a domestic violence survivor. Some of my experiences with officers have been horrible. Some have been really great. I'm actually uh, sober because an officer involved in my relapse was, for whatever reason, way more kind than he probably should have been. And he allowed me to go to a hospital instead of arresting me and putting me in jail. And that was the last night I drank over 15 years ago. Um, so, you know, some police in my life have, have been great and a lot have just been mediocre or, or totally neutral. And, and, but I think, you know, when the public's only experience with police are the stuff that makes it in seven days or is the stuff where someone comes to the mayor's coffee hour because they're unhappy with their interaction. I mean, it just really skews your viewpoint and like, hey, I guess like we really do have a problem here. And I just think it's important that there are mechanisms where we could be having a more accurate portrayal. And that's best too for figuring out the problems. If it's not, you know, clouded by a bunch of, you know, hearsay or assumptions, and just to get a more accurate picture, I think would be super important. Uh, yeah. Thank you. That's it. That's, that's good. <laughs> uh, Jake, you're in the room. Would you like an opportunity to, to share? If not, we'll see if Fareed will. It's up to you. Um, I don't think that I have any thoughts really that haven't been already shared. And I've been focusing on types of jokes. But I will say uh, that I'd like to echo the sentiment that I think it, it's, it's humans, right? Like, we are human beings, and it's not necessarily uh, a, a scheme or know anything that anybody's trying to do but i will note that the first meeting of the joint committee was at the same time as a public safety meeting at the board 560 yeah, the second meeting was during uh police commission meeting the third meeting um, if you look on board docs it's not there but board docs does show that there's a city council meeting so i i just think that um again i don't think anybody's doing it Wrong, but I just think that moving forward, we have to be really, really intentional if we want this to be a process that really engages the public to be very explicitly clear when the meeting is happening, where it is happening, how people can see it. And I'd like to go back to some which you said at the convention resources. I think that we should really remember uh, who is having issues of trust with our police department. Uh, we should make sure that there are language resources for these meetings. Uh, and I think that we should also consider having with not drafting these on maybe a summit. Maybe there's a public safety uh, community oversight police summit. Thank you. Uh, Fareed, is Fareed still there? No. Looks like Fareed is not. Let us... Um, Might I respond? Well, of course. Uh, there's several of the comments here. And one, um, uh, uh, Councillor Bergman, was yours with regard to the vast array of tasks and the issue essentially of becoming too cozy with the police. I think the issue is what structure maintains an arm's length relationship, right? Um, I, we've, I've actually had this conversation with Commissioner Bergman before. Uh, I believe that the, the, the breadth of the tasks that we have need to all stay within the commission. 
There is substantial learning in every one of our tasks. There's substantial learning that informs other aspects of what we do. I think if you specialize too much and hive off some of these tasks, you really you lack, you, you fail to develop the experience and full knowledge of the complexities of, of, of managing the system. So, um, with regard to the issue of becoming too cozy, I really appreciate that. Uh, I think that having a monitor who would be the interface between the police department and the commission is a way to gain that objectivity. But I would like to say now that what we have done in the last three years is to develop a separate identity. Uh, we now deliberate independently in executive session, for example. Uh, and all that we do is to, under, to, to maintain an understa understanding and inform ourselves of what the commission perspective is. Uh, so again, I appreciate your concern, but even with the current structure, I don't see that problem. It could be with different commissioners that that would be a problem. And, and as I said, maybe the monitor is the solution to that concern about uh, objectivity. Um, with regard to expertise, uh, I did mention not only expertise, but experience. Uh, we have uh, a few people of color on the commission. We have uh, people who have mental health experience that work uh, in mental health, for example. So all of that is tremendously important to what we do. And so when I say expertise, I'm not talking about just, uh, just documents, but also an understanding of the nature of how public safety can go wrong if there's bias, for example, or a failure to understand various groups. With regard to um, expertise also, let me remind you all that we have legal counsel. That's a lot of where our expertise comes now. So that is why having le independent legal counsel has been so important for us, is to inform us of what investigations should look like, what questions to, to what documents to ask for, um, how, the, how we should implement our policies and where the policies, our own policies have gaps and where we should seek changes and so forth. And finally, I'm gonna say a little bit about anonymized complaints. I think your perspective is exactly right that we get a lot of complaints that are not serious. I think it would be beneficial for the community to understand that. And many times the, the, the police department responds very well to those complaints, right? And it's, so it would be, it's good, it would be good to know what the police department, how the police department is responding to them. And in many cases, there's a lack of understanding of policing. And that process, I see complaints not as a, a tool for punishment or discipline, but I see it as an opportunity for discussion and for expanding understanding in two directions. But that has to be in two directions. And quite frankly, we don't quite have that yet. But let me, let me say something else about the uh, complaint process being public. And by the way, you can look at the Boulder, Colorado, annual report to see how they, re they report all of the complaints in their annual report and the disposition of the complaints. You could look on Vermont State Police website to look at how they summarize uh, complaints there. So you can get an idea just of how you could do it in a way that's fairly sanitized, that is not outing anybody in particular. So I'm gonna just put this out there because it's, it's something I've, I've thought a lot about because the, dis the, the, the discussion inevitably gets held up on who makes the final decision about dis discipline. Should it be the chief? Should it be somebody else? You should know that South Burlington, the mayor makes the decision. The chief makes a recommendation to the mayor. There are many different models. But a conversation I had with NACOL uh, a couple of years ago, and the person who I think is now president of NACOL, uh, said that she thought that, that the decision should rest with the chief. But that the way that you have really accountability is that the complaints need to be public. The commission's, uh, the, the chief's decision needs to be public and why. The commission's recommendations and findings need to be made public. And when the chief disagrees with the commission, he or she needs to, in writing and publicly, explain why. That then gives accountability, that gives the community, the chief is then accountable. The secrecy that we have now doesn't really allow for that. But I, I also, you know, and her, her argument was that, you know, ultimately the chief should be accountable for his, his or her decisions and by making those decisions public, that is a way to achieve that. I'm not, I, I uh, I'm probably will uh, 
don't know where I will end up in that, but that has really informed me a great deal. And it's one of the reasons why I think making complaints uh, public is actually can be very healthy for this process. That's it. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Councillor Shannon, who hasn't had a second bite, and then we'll go to you with the third one. But, yeah. Okay. Um, and I just wanted to say to Jake's comment, because I think it's really important that the public know how to access our information, that the official warning for the city is the city calendar. Not everything is on board docs, and we're transitioning off of it. So you're going to... Yeah, we had this conversation, actually, before the meeting. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm aware. Thank you. Anything else? Um, I'm not completely clear where we're going. Well, that's the next um, item. Uh, that's the next agenda item. So. And I'm, uh, so so in the where we're going from here, I just want to say that I continue to be concerned about our, you know that we want to, we don't want this committee to be adversarial to the police, that we want, we're not getting input from police officers at this point, and I think we need to figure out how to do that. How do they see the current oversight model? What do they see as the strengths and weaknesses of our current oversight model? So we will get to that in the next item. Sarah. Just saying exactly, on this one, and then um, we can following up on Stephanie's point about the need for transparency. When I agree, and I soon enough, I would love to have us have an analysis. Um, and I want to task somebody with it either the commission, the a commission's attorney, or even the city attorney. What are the impediments? Stop, you know, what, you're not getting it now, or you feel you're not getting it now. What you know, in terms of HR, union contract, policy. You know, are there things that we need to fix um, to make that happen? And if there's impediments legally or whatever, I'd, I'd like us somebody in the on this you know, month or so to to identify that clearly because I think I don't know what to, I think I think that's a very important thing, and we just need to understand what it, do we need an ordinance? Do we need a what tweaks do we need? Okay. Can I just make one yeah. final comment about um, internal investigations? I think the reason there's a difference of perception between the chief and me is that um, that my when I conceptualize internal complaints, I'm literally thinking of an officer coming to the commission with a complaint. Uh, with the recent complaint that the uh, the chief, the internal investigation the chief was referring to, didn't come to us as a complaint, right? from the police department to the commission. So I don't, that may be a nuance that's too complex for all of you, but just to say that there is, there is some complexity around that uh, as to whether when we talk about an internal complaint, it's actually an individual officer or is it BPD or someone internal to BPD that has gone to the chief to ask for, an, uh, make a complaint. We, at, in this recent complaint, we didn't know about it until the, uh, until the very end. So it was it didn't come in through the same complaint portal process that we normally get those. And just to just to try to explain the confusion and I think we should do some more thinking about that process as well. So if the chief would like to speak, I do not want to get us to get into a back and forth, but please. This was brought to the commission in executive session prior to it being brought in its fullness in the most recent executive session. When, it, when the complaint was opened, it was in fact brought to the commission. And there are any number, I think, for example, the, the one the complaint that the commissioner mentioned had been uh, brought to arbitration, that was an internally generated complaint that was brought by, it's true that they don't go directly to the police commission. They can, and the new, and there is a, we, we recently uh, adopted a new directive that allows for that, um, that they can go to HR, they can go to the police commission, they can go to whomever. In these both these, these instances, they chose to go to their chain of command, which is the proper way to do it. Certainly, if there was some other complaint that the, the complainant felt I would rather go outside the chain of command, there exists mechanisms for that. But these are nevertheless internal complaints, and they they as soon as they are are registered with us, we share them with the commission at the very next 
wish me in as we do any people. Okay. Uh, I don't want to get into a back and forth, so thank you for that. Uh, those two perspectives, appreciate that greatly. And to the extent to which it reveals systems that need to be looked at, and they may not, but it may, then uh, we should uh, um, we should possibly look at that, or we can look at that. So I'm not, let's not go any further than that. Is this something? Yeah, I was just wondering if uh, she could point to what that can possibly uh, represent. Well, so I, I've just shared with, uh, so Councillor uh, Shannon shared with Councillor Travers the link to TD40, which is online. Um, and it's TD40, and it's in our, uh, our listing of directives, which is on the police department website. And then I just shared with, uh, with that same email group uh, with Councillor Travers uh, the agreement with the police commission from August of 2020. And, and there it, it states um, that all complaints, whether generated externally or internally, are referred to as citizen complaints. All citizen complaints are documented on a spreadsheet maintained by the deputy chief of administration. And then it goes on to talk about how those are shared with the police commission uh, in, in the very, at the next police commission meeting in executive session. But more, but what we've done is that any complaint that comes in through the online portal goes automatically to the police commission. So it's simultaneous that it comes to the, the department and the commission. Similarly, any complaint that comes to us through other means, uh, we endeavor to make that known to them before the next police commission executive session, which may be you know some number of days away. Can I, can I yes. just ask a clarifying question about the August 25th, 2020 Burlington Police Commission policy? Yes. It w was this, it says it was adopted on that date. Was this adopted by the commission? Was it adopted by the police department? It's unsigned. It just, where did this come it, from? It was agreement. This was worked on primarily by uh, then Police Commissioner Shereen Hart and then Interim Police Chief Jennifer Morrison. Uh, I finished working on it with uh, Commissioner Hart and because Commissioner Morris, uh, excuse me, Chief Morris left on June, I believe, 11th of 2020. Uh, and it was agreed by all the two, by all parties in that August 2020 police commission session. So it's, it's not signed, but that is, it was an agreement between the two parties. Thank you. Okay. How about we move to the next and last item on our agenda, which is a discussion of next steps, which includes outreach and support, but also includes meeting dates and agenda items. And the uh, outreach and support has um, been commented upon, and so that it's a, it's a pretty broad uh, look at it. Um, and I would uh, let me turn to my co-chair here, who has had a, a joyous uh, time not chairing this this meeting. I'm yeah, sure. Well done. So, um, so the first of all, in terms, I mean, if we're looking at this all as sort of one agenda item, outreach and support and. Uh, sort of next meetings, next steps, so to speak. Um, uh, uh, let me acknowledge that on any issue, there's always room for us to do better. Uh, and that's not just for this committee, it's for any city committee, it's for the council itself. It was constantly a discussion when I was uh, serving on the Ward 5 NPA or the Parks Commission. Uh, you know, uh, when should we be hosting meetings? Where should we be hosting meetings? What type of support can we provide to um, to promote um, further attendance along those lines? So, you know, let, let me acknowledge that there is uh, always room to do better. Um, and I do think that with whatever our next meetings are, we need to be very clear uh, up front with respect to when those are and, and properly warn them. Um, I do want to say, though, that I, I, I don't think these are meetings that have been occurring uh, in the shadows. Um, you know, more than four weeks ago, uh, we warned all three meetings this month, including the meeting on the 23rd and the May 30th. We were very clear in an email that went out on May 1st that 
our May 23rd meeting would be at 5.30, that tonight's meeting would be at 6.30. I regret that there was a change in location because of a special meeting uh, called for the City Council this evening, but uh, but we've been very clear about the meeting dates and times. We also, unlike any other committee that I've served on, have a very uh, specific uh, warned meeting group for the purposes of these meetings that includes um, uh, the police department, it includes uh, all of the municipal unions, including um, the police union. It certainly includes representatives from uh, the police commission. Uh, we specifically reach out to every uh, neighborhood planning assembly um, we've added uh, a number of uh, mayoral departments, including the Racial Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging Office, uh, including, of, of course, uh, the City Attorney's Office, including Human Resources, and we heard from Director Karen Durfee at our last meeting, um, and as well as uh, 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 resident advocates on this issue. We've been very purposeful in um, sending these, these warn notices since, uh, again, well more than four weeks ago to um, folks behind uh, the question seven ballot item. And so while, while I acknowledge that there's always room for improvement, I also think that um, that, uh, that that we're, we're off on, I think, um, the right foot here. Uh, and I know that we've been talking to folks in the city attorney's office about standing up a website um, and, and getting more information. I think Councilor Doherty's point about uh, an index and being clear about uh, our, our agenda items in such a way that are easier for folks to follow um, and, uh, and track uh, is um, a point well taken. So with that, um, we had circulated a, a doodle poll um, to members of the committee and uh, as, a, as a larger committee, uh, especially during the summer months, it's been, uh, as it was initially with these meetings, difficult to find a time that works for everyone. Um, but I do think to Commissioner Seguino's points earlier that if the police commission is able to have some recommendations by the end of this month, the first date that we had amongst this group that worked for everyone was um, July 6th. Um, and that is at what, what day of the, the week is that? It looks like it's a Thursday. Um, yep, Thursday, July 6th. Yep. So let me let me just parenthetically add that it would appear that the NPAs meet on Thursdays and they meet like every basically every Thursday of the month there's one of them they sort of go in sequence so when we're looking at dates we need to keep all that in in that well, ours doesn't but Wednesday right South Bend takes a hike to follow summer break uh, Ben's and I, I also want to note that Councillor Hightower has had her hand up, so we would we would do that. I wanted to make sure that uh, uh, that Ben was done, and also Councillor Grant has their hand up. So well, let me just throw the dates out that we yeah. have basically between now and the end of August. These are the dates that all six of us have indicated our availability. It's July sixth, okay. July thirteenth, August. Hold up. Yeah, sorry. Okay. <laughs> July sixth. July 13, August 1, and August 8. Okay. Oh, so. I also can't do August 1. I thought I responded to you. Do you not get my response? Um, well, okay. I'm well, pretty sure that was on. Perhaps I had provided those dates to Jean before you responded. But so the date that worked for yep. everyone else. <laughs> so, so, okay. So we have two dates that work for all six of us the entire summer. So let it, let, let's, <laughs> let's, let, those dates are out. We have uh, at least some conflicts. We've got some possible slash probable conflicts with NPA date. Uh, Councillor Hightower. I don't mean to stop the conversation on um, our next date. I would love to get the London calendar. I just, I think I just want to reiterate um, that I think we've had so many, we've had so much conversation on the oversight in general, and there's been a lot of public input that has been done. And I just want to reiterate that I think the sooner we can come to decision points um, based on what we're hearing, the better our public input will be, because if folks can respond to something, it doesn't matter if that's police officers, if that's the general public, if that's NPA, like, 
I think we find over and over again that we make decisions really late and then we get a bunch of response and then we don't have the time to react to it anymore. So I just really want to avoid <laughs> doing that, uh, which is the way that public input usually goes um, and make sure that we're coming to decisions as early as possible or being clear about if we have made decisions with those bars so we can get feedback on decisions, not just on hypotheticals. And I think that's different right now when obviously we've got folks like Stephanie in the room and things like that. But I think the more we're trying to sway this into the public, the more or broader group, the more we'll have to be clear about what we're making decisions on and what we've decided thus far and get into that. Thank you. Uh, at, at the the risk of uh, uh, pillaring myself um, from la our last meeting when you told me how wrong I was, if you could be so kind as to uh, to repeat what the more specific uh, suggestion that you had, um, that might be helpful. I, I think it had to do with the uh, the two co chairs coming together to do certain to do something. So if you could just state that again, that would be helpful. Yeah, I think I would prefer if the two co-chairs sat together and made an outline of what we think we need to make decisions on. Um, and then we can, in the next meeting, decide what we have already made decisions on, what we need to get more information on to make those decisions, um, and work, work through that. Thank you. And I'm happy to provide input, but I don't want to step on your No, I, thank you. This is all hel all helpful um, in terms of moving forward. Um, that is an idea that relates to agenda items. Um, is the desire to focus on dates, or should we? And we have an idea for, you know, sort of like conceptual, what we're going to, what we would talk about. Um, and we will get to the resources for outreach and, and staff support after, or maybe even now. Uh, is there a preference in terms of this agenda item, how to move us to decisions? Um, well, first of all, for... Uh, to John's point, forget what I said about August 1st and 8th. Going back to the doodle poll, it could be August 2nd or 3rd um, is, is a date that we all have availability. So July 6th, July 13th, and then August 2nd or August 3rd. And just food for thought here for the purposes of, of our discussion here, uh, my suggestion would be if we are able to meet on July 6th and we have Commissioner Seguino here. If if we believe that the police commission would be able to provide further input by our meeting on July 6th, then I would propose that our agenda at that meeting be to, to further review the specific recommendations from the police commission. I think to Councillor Hightower's point, Gene, you and I can perhaps before that meeting, and I do think the report we received this evening gives us a good framework for us to Put some of these more specific questions together can um, pose some questions then to try to at the meeting on the 6th um, really narrow our our, our um, work here um, I to counsel Shannon's point at either the meeting on the 6th or the 13th I think perhaps the meeting on the 13th and would be open to Chief Murad's feedback on this as well I think we should be purposeful about um, receiving feedback from the police department directly um, and whether that come from Chief Murad or uh, for us to figure out how to um, get the union's representation here or other police officers um, I think that that would be helpful for uh, for the 13th um, and then uh, I, I think it's possible that you know we may be able to have something on paper uh, on or about the 13th, certainly no later than um, whatever our meeting is in the first week of August, and whether or not we're able to pass something out and make that our last meeting in August, or whether or not we'll need one more meeting after that, which I think is probably more likely um, that that would be sort of a, a roadmap in my own mind um, for how uh, the committee can operate over the next three to four meetings.
committee member reflections. And then we'll go to Councillor Grant. I was just going to say, I, I, were you looking at me? No, I was, but I <laughs> look at y'all. I, uh, I think a lot of that depends upon Commissioner Seguino's assessment as to whether or not the commission can do that in a timely way. That We're seems to be a first order question. That's my goal. That's, you know, the commissioners are, we are prepared to work hard to bring you something by June 27. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Sarah, and then I will go to Milo, and then Zarai, you wanted to, uh, you have your hand up anew? No. Okay. Um, I agree with all of what we said. I, I don't know. It's worth re-doodling us that we've got three meetings set up for sure, right? The 6th, the 13th, and the 2nd or 3rd. Um, encourage us to He's another couple in there in the next few months and understand that we may not get all all of us all six of us there i mean that's just going to be a reality i think it's going to be a reality that we're going to conflict with somebody's meeting and exercising a little um, privilege we've got to get our work done i i agree absolutely with Councilor hightower that i think the bulk of public engagement is better served when we have something specific to react to. We did a lot of work through the Talitha process. We've done a lot of work over um, Proposal 7. I think we need something for people to react to. I think um, have, I like the idea of even a summit, but I think that's got to come later. Not, I think we're, it was too early for us to, to be doing that. Okay. Councillor Grant. Um, I had a few things. I'm sorry, I had my hand up for a while, but I just make it as brief as possible. Uh, just to keep in mind around investigations, uh, in addition to the use of a lawyer, use of the directives and policies, um, if we're lucky enough to get uh, unredacted affidavits, you know, we're using that information as well. So investigations pulled from uh, different areas that do involve uh, law enforcement. It's just that sometimes um, we're not given uh, true transparency and access to information uh, that is needed. Um, and I want to see this process help to to protect that to protect that right to, to, to get that information. At, at times, um, representatives from the city attorney's office are like, I really don't know why you got my most redacted information, and but I think this is the reason. You know, those weren't okay conversations. You know, you definitely the I think it's the January um, meeting where we didn't discuss. The, the specificities around the complaints, but in general, we're talking about why is so much redacted information occurring. So that's something that we have to keep in mind. Um, I'm saying that we shouldn't have input from officers. I just want to bring to everybody's attention again that we have history throughout politics had that representation. We have to make sure that we have a good balance and an understanding that part of this is to look out for the residents in our community. So, for example, I'm not going to go through every item in the contract that uh, the CNA recommendations uh, suggested be taken into consideration and weren't, but there was a failure. So that contract also gives us information about how the department feels about this type of accountability. Um, so really problematic things that have set us back, and the matter of lot didn't. And in fact, you know, contracts such as the uh, the length of, uh, of the amount of time that uh, 
the disciplinary records are uh, are kept, uh, you know, and, and things like that. So we got to keep all of that in mind and, and keep pushing back. We have to have that balance. We have to realize that what our job is is to be looking out for the residents of the city, um, improving the atmosphere for our officers, right? And because the whole community engagement part of it too is is, is a separate thing. Um, that's something that I cared about for a very long time, but it, I become this persona no grata because it doesn't matter what I say about it. So we'll just leave it there's improvements that can be made there, right? Um, and I think things that the commission can do that other commissions and uh, civilian review boards that I've looked at, you know, they're they're more involved in soliciting commendations for uh, the department. They get more information on when people, when there are changes. And we've had so much change, but we don't always get uh, the information on on new hires in terms of identifying them and ways that we can introduce them to the public. Uh, we don't always get information uh, like if someone becomes a detective. Um, so, Councillor Grant, if I if if, if, if yeah, I could so get, if if I could get you to focus um, a little bit more sure, on 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 yeah. on this particular. And I just, every time I, I, I feel we're, we're getting away from focusing on, on the, the residents and having that balance, because we haven't had the balance, to be truthful. We have not had the balance. And so that's one thing I guess I'm going to continue to more about. Okay. Because if we don't have the balance, we will fail. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I just want to say that on July 6, at 6.30, the Ward 6 NPA is scheduled to meet. Um, I, I, it's not my NPA. Um, uh, my NPA is meeting on the 13th. It starts at 6.30, but our um, counselor comments happen about 7.45. So I think that perhaps um, a meeting schedule of ours that started at 5.30 and went to 7.30 would eliminate the conflict in considering the, the Zoom options, then uh, they would at least uh, provide an opportunity for people to do both. I personally believe that there's, there's conflict in terms of meetings and we can't we're going to be conflicting with somebody at some point. And so we've got to do the best we can. Um, and so that is the way that I think we um, can accommodate those two uh, conflicts. I uh, uh, Thursday the 3rd is a conflict, but there is nothing on the 2nd so of August. So um, unless we were going to meet two days in a row, then the um maybe we should uh, i i you know i i, I, I we got two free days uh you know <laughs> yes i i do not think it's out of line despite the amount of garbage that i will get at home for for that but um uh <laughs> be that cheese, yes garbage. yes garbage totally right you know there's good garbage but garbage. there's garbage there's nonetheless <laughs> um so um there is that. And I think moving forward, my suggestion is that we embrace uh, Councillor Hightower's suggestion for the co-chairs to sit down and work through those uh, decision points and outline those um, and try our best to bring them to this committee on the 6th. Um, I also think we, we have been offered by um, uh, Jordan, uh, some staff support from an attorney, not for the outreach stuff, which I think is, but for um, uh, Josh Diamond is um, a former assistant um, attorney general. And I, he, I think he's connected, uh, has been connected in a variety of ways um, with public safety issues. And she said that he would be willing. And my suggestion to help us uh, as a as a, as a staff attorney, um, 
And I, I, my suggestion would be that Ben and I work through that with Jordan and see if we can get that kind of support because we may want to have um, some more research as well as some maybe some outreach, but also to see if we can get um, Jordan's assistance in um, getting a, getting the outreach work um, for to the community to um, through uh, REIB and uh, the uh, uh, the CEDOs, um, out, um pu public engagement community engagement, which uh, I did do one reach out, but did not get any responses and it's my bad that I didn't uh, didn't follow up on that. So we should do that maybe between the two of us, we will have the political clout to do that. I see Jordan, whose name I've mentioned, not in vain, and, and, and perhaps she would like to uh, to weigh in on uh, both the, the, the Josh Diamond, but also uh, trying to, to, to have us um, enlist um, REIB and uh, the, probably Jillian at uh, CEDO for doing some engagement um, with the community. That was very successful uh, with the uh, all resident legal voting when we when Jillian helped us. So I know that it has an impact and, it would be helpful. And I just, what, you have reached out to Jillian already? And, and Kim and didn't get any responses. Actually, I, I reached out to Brian. So I didn't reach out to Jillian, but I did reach out to Brian and Kim. And so your assistance in that would be greatly appreciated. Great. Let me um, follow up with those folks and see what I can do to assist. That is wonderful. And we will talk to you about uh, Josh. Thank you. And, and thank you. you. We'll, we'll talk yeah. later about working with Josh. Great. Thank you, and thank you for, for making that connection. Um, so, yes. Do I need you anymore? Uh, no, I don't think, uh, I, quote unquote, need, no. You, you you can go if you if this isn't scintillating enough for you, then uh, you, can, you can go. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you very you. much, Stephanie. Councilor. Yes. Uh, having worked on the uh, all resident voting, and it was very successful, but we did in fact have something crafted for people to yes. respond to. So again, I think, I don't want to call people together and use the resources of whatever we need until we're like ready to. Well, I, I, I think this is the blending yeah. of, uh, of all of these together so that we are doing that work to bring back to you mm -hmm. and then um, getting the resources that, uh, that we need. Um, and uh, Jordan is still on there. So I don't know, Jordan, whether you heard the request for um, uh, translation services and assorted other and website stuff. So um, ultimately, our success in doing that um, is uh, predicated on our ability to, uh, to access um, other people to, to help us do the work. Yes. And I don't want to speak for legal, but I think it seems to me the website and the degree that the mayor's office can volunteer. I mean, I know how Swamp Legal is, and I think having the website, which is something then we all can get out to a lot of people, and that's easy to do once it's set up, because you can then send the link to millions of people. So this is great. Yeah. And uh, I think that... Uh, what I, what I envision is also us seeing if we can do um, further outreach, you know, in, in, in with that group uh, of people that we have sent things to um, mm -hmm. and uh, anybody's assistance on that would be very helpful. Um, so I, I look to people who have come and have shown an interest to help us with that. I look to the chief uh, to help us with with that and that outreach so we can do it in the most effective way possible and one size like a meeting doesn't fit all so we should be open to uh to going where people are um and consistent with the uh, uh, with the idea that we're giving something to people that they can actually look at and focus on so it's it's meaningful to them because otherwise the point is is well taken um I, I just 
And yes. Yes, that's exactly what I'm 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 seeking right. from you. Thank you. Thank you for the right. clarification. And yes. Well, I, Jim. I think that it may be a little bit of a chicken and egg question uh, because while it's good to have something to respond to, there's also the reaction that you created something without without input. Um, so just want to kind of caution this. on this and um, that impact as well yeah. on the concerns. Of yeah. Fortunately, this community has had three years, I look at my watch, but I have no years on it. Three <laughs> years of having to, of working on this at least. I would not say that by any means. Well, We've had a discussion about really, we, we haven't been working on it. And- Okay, I, we're not gonna debate, we're not gonna debate that. L l suffice it to say, we've had votes at the council. We've had votes in the public, whether it's been sufficient one can agree to disagree. Um, is there anything new that will help us get our charge accomplished? Any new comments that will... If not, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Well, sorry. That, Go ahead. Sam. Yeah. Well, I'll adjourn this, but I, for the half of us on ordinance. Yeah, June 12th, that was what I was going to bring okay. up as well. So uh, just if I could use this opportunity for the folks that are on ordinance, <clears throat> we also have to meet with respect to the South End Innovation District. Um, Zariah, Joan, Sarah, uh, are you available uh, to have our next meeting on that on Monday, June 12th at 7 p.m.? Yes. Okay, thumbs up all around. So I will reach out to city staff. I know um, Megan Tuttle's uh, been away. I mean, I'm open to another meeting time. I thought I would personally prefer seven, but we, we could meet earlier if yeah, folks would like. Zariah, so, do you have any preference? There is a board of finance, but it doesn't affect us individually and it will, I don't know what's on its docket. So later is better, just in case anyone wants to go to Board of Finance. I know staff, including within planning and city attorney's office, had indicated that June twelfth works for them. Okay. So at at seven. Then on dates, because there is no conflict on uh, August second, if we can have uh, the August second date be that date, maybe we would propose a uh, the August third as well if. People want it, but uh, I put it on there. I mean, we could, it's easier to but, cancel than it is to set a date, and sure. there's actually not as many other meetings in the month of August. So, well, what's hard is to get you know, you want usually you want to have some work done in between the meetings, so it's very difficult back to back. If we need an ordinance for the meeting, you know, the other date could provide opportunity to have some other meetings that we could have. Well. I still think we need another ordinance meeting, but I think in terms of the work of this joint committee, there's a lot to pour over. And I, you know, so hopefully by August 1st, no, August 2nd and 3rd, we have some documents to review, which could in fact take us more than one meeting to plow through. That's just my answer. So I'm suggesting the Joint Committee still keep those meetings and Chair Travers, we still need an ordinance meeting as well. We have June 12th. Uh, the, the next available is June 29th, but Mr. Cannon's not available that day, so. June 29th? Yeah. Well, you could redo it a little, four of us. I am available. Okay. Is redo all a verb? Sure, it is now. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm concerned if you tell me I'm not because I don't see why I wouldn't. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't okay. see the green check, but here we go. So, what what day is it? July? June 29th. Or or June 12th, June 29th for ordinance. Okay. And for the joint committee, July 6th, July 13th, August 2nd, August 3rd. You're going to email that out? Yes. Let's do it right now. 
Would you agree that it'd be seven o'clock? That was the time I proposed, but we could, I, I'm flexible. Amy. Oh, sorry, sorry. I probably don't have Jerry do down June 29th, but I, later would be better for me. But I think as long as it's 5:30 or later, I'll be fine. Are you going to have Jerry be at the city council? I got it. It's civic duty. <laughs> State, you're a federal. Uh, you're exempt from the fe from federal juries if you're a government official. I knew I had a reason why I wasn't on the jury for the 20 years I worked for the city. I've never been asked. You're missing something. That's great. And can we, can we say 5:30 just to keep it consistent? 5:30. 5.30 on those for our joint committee meetings. Uh, I, I say that because of the conflicts with the NPA. And our, there are three of the four meetings are conflicted. Um, so at least we have the, the, a, a shot at participation of some fashion at an NPA meeting and can ask them to uh, move any conflicting thing back like a public safety discussion. Like Amy, Amy, did you? Yeah, just so just quick thought. Um, so coming out of the scrub line, facilitation perspective, um, we've got a couple of my here as well. Um, so I kind of almost like work backwards a little bit to say, like, if, if we need to have something by the beginning of September and and we want to have a uh, public engagement, but actually have it be meaningful and actually be iterative and not just like the town planning commission and chicken or egg, like we're getting your input because we already decided. I'm wondering, like, at the counselor uh, reference point, like, have the meetings that are scheduled out, I'm imagining they'd be through August. We get to that. I'm also wondering, that's a very short time period to potentially get public input. And we're talking, I think what it was said was by July 13th, we potentially have, like, the bare bones structure of something for immediate feedback on. Um, and not just saying, like, oh, that totally, like, you think about getting community feedback, like how many weeks do you need to do that? But then, and then also then respond to that, and then also get whatever language needs to be finalized. Like that's a lot of things to happen at the end of July, August, and then your meeting in September, right? Or proposing in September. So I think if it can be very clear, like by July 13th, trying to have this language, and then is there a very short period of time where it's made very clear to the public? This is when your engagement needs to be happening. This is when your voice needs to be heard. There will be these opportunities, whatever they are. And I, it sounds like that is evolving, so I don't, I'm not trying to put too much pressure on saying, like, what are those opportunities right now? But if we could be very clear about what that window is so that then there's also still time to come back and, and iteratively, like, change things from the community engagement. Um, I just want to be clear about what the timeline is for that community engagement and then what is iterative process that occurs after so it doesn't just become like a we shared it, and then there's not a time built in to actually react to something we shared. That does. Does. I'm also mindful of the fact that once this committee comes up with something, it's going to be forwarded back to the full council. So we won't ultimately have the final say. So once once our committee comes up with something, and I hear everything you're saying, there will also be uh, yet another process <laughs> for the full council and additional voices perhaps a window there for us to do um, something broader, whether, and I would hope in addition to what the committee had already done, but there, I think there will be yet another opportunity before the full council considers whatever I believe will come out of this committee. Okay. Any last comments? I entertain a motion to adjourn. I hear a motion by Councillor Shannon. Do I hear a second? I see one from Co-Chair Travers. I think it's within the hour. It probably is, <laughs> but I'm I am motion to adjourn. The clock can change in that. Is that there you go? You know, like a minute. If you ain't got a minute right now to give up, then I see no objection, so we are adjourned.